So in case you guys didn't see today, the New York Times is under scrutiny for inaccurately reporting the events of October 7th. These events include the widely circulated reports of the 40 beheaded babies and the mass sexual assault of Israeli women and girls. The front page New York Times article that stated these allegations was co-written by a former IDF intelligence officer with no prior journalistic experience named uh, Anat Schwartz. After writing the article, Schwartz liked a tweet that stated Israel should turn Gaza into a slaughterhouse, execute prisoners, and violate any norm along the way to victory. The New York Times said it is currently reviewing its contract with Anat Schwartz. Uh, so when I saw this, I felt like uh, the fact that the New York Times has, one, hired a former Israeli uh, soldier, an intelligence officer, to write this article, no journalist experience. Like, they hired her in November. And it's unclear why. Like they haven't, they haven't said why they've hired her. Her nephew worked at the New York Times, and they sent her out to uh, to uh, Israel to take reports from people. And people, and she said that you know, uh, yeah, I talked to folks, and I had to be trained on making sure I could back up my claims with two or three different sources to cross check them. She didn't do them. She talked to this uh, this lady. Uh, what's her name? Um, named Mendes, uh, and. Uh, Cherie Mendes, and she's an American architect who serves in a rabbinical unit of the Israeli Defense Forces. And uh, she talked to her about uh, the, the evidence of sexual assault. And she said that uh, we have evidence of rape, pelvises were broken, and it probably takes a lot to break a pelvis. And this was among grandmothers down to small children. This is not just something we saw on the internet. We saw these bodies with our own eyes. Mendes said, Mendes has been a ubiquitous figure in Israeli government and military narratives about sexual assault since October 7th, and she has no medical or forensic credentials to legally determine rape. And she's also talked about other violence on October 7th, saying a baby was cut out of a pregnant woman and beheaded on October 7th. The records show no pregnant women killed on October 7th in the, in the entire uh, country of Israel. So wow. uh, yeah, everything that the New York Times has reported here has been, you know, forcing this narrative that, yeah, these people are fucking monsters. We need to get this done. And I felt like Jesse, Jesse Pinkman with like uh, the New York Times is Walter <laughs> White. It's like, we can't let them keep getting away with this. Like, I just felt like that the Jesse Pinkman me out there is like, how often are we going to let them? And this is what really concerns me about this is that. The New York Times is like, investigating themselves for hiring this, uh, you know, Israeli intelligence officer to to write this, uh, you know, let, let's be real propaganda piece to, to help yeah. uh, bolster a war. And I'm afraid that she's just going to take the fall for this. And we're just going to let the New York Times keep doing this because that's exactly what's going to happen here. So you guys hadn't heard about this, but like, what are your what are your thoughts so far? Well, I want to before, before we jump in, I want to clarify. Mm -hmm. Is this like. The origin of the 40 beheaded babies. So the origin of the 40 beheaded babies comes from uh this lady here. Uh what's her name? I forgot, Mendes, uh Sheree Mendes, and uh, other reports from the Israeli military. And yeah, so yeah. They, they yeah, so they sent this lady who was also in the Israeli military, <laughs> went to to verify this, who is not a journalist. I can't stress this enough, not a journalist. And She's like, yeah, good enough for me. And they printed this on the front page of the New York Times, and it circulated all throughout American media and Western media. It took it took over a month before people started questioning this narrative, and mm -hmm. then they actually started questioning the source. Yeah, and 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 I, again, I I want to very specifically because again to our audience, this was new. We weren't planning on talking about this, and teachers like yeah. screw the topic that we we had planned for, <laughs> that you had researched, that you were aware of. We're gonna do this, and I hadn't heard the story, so I just want to clarify. Like, this is the report. Like, th this obviously falsified thing is the report that started the 40 beheaded babies narrative that the president of the United States repeated. It's just this fucking nobody that the New York Times sent to Israel to obviously lie. Like, that... That is the story? That That is, like, real? Like, I, I'm just... Like, obviously, this is believable, knowing everything that's going on. But it's one of those things where it's like, oh, my God, this is so obviously so, awful it's almost too good to be true from my the, position the origin of the story is the israeli government and okay. so they sent her to clarify for the new york so the new york times just gave gravitas to it. Yeah, like yeah God, and yeah. so yeah okay. like uh because you saw like i remember seeing like an israeli military soldier talking about oh yeah we saw 40 i remember seeing that clip mm -hmm, or stuff like yeah. that and so you know what you put for some odd reason we still have like i don't know it's it's it is earned in a lot of ways because uh whenever you see 
uh, news report, I always say, you know, oh, you trust us. You don't got to trust the news. Look for the actual sources. And the sources, when people actually started looking into this, was this lady who was liking tweets saying to turn Gaza into a slaughterhouse and violate, you know, international law. And then you found out that she got the job of the New York Times like a week after or two, a couple weeks after October 7th and helped write this article when she'd never written an article in her life. And, you know, we've just let this slide for months on end. Yeah, I mean, insane to me. And the the problem here, which is the problem with any redactions that happens in the media, um, the this story will get far less coverage oh. than the initial report that forty babies were beheaded on October seventh, right? Mm -hmm. And the the claim that that all these babies were beheaded and and all the other things you brought up. Those claims will exist and be repeated for probably years to come. Yep. Uh, maybe even like a decade, right? Like people will continue to say, well, you know, Hamas cut the heads off of babies. Um, and and this that story that was probably a lie at this point, uh, that story will will continue to be repeated. But also it's it's interesting to me how, you know, will uh, people on the left will often argue, you know, Israel's doing a genocide. They want to kill Palestinians. Uh, they'll hide behind, you know, Hamas was in this building. But it's just all a pretext because they want to push civilians out of the Gaza Strip. And people will defend this. Uh, people will defend Israel and make all kinds of arguments. And then we see that the people that are sort of at the forefront of of defending Israel are retweeting things that are like, yeah, turn Gaza into a Walmart parking lot. It's, it's like it, this is obvious to me. Like, the, like, why are you hiding mm -hmm. what you truly believe behind so many layers of lies and pretext? Just admit it so we can talk to each other. It's insane. <laughs> but could you really Absolutely. talk to them after that? Like, like out, nah. after someone said no, that, but be no more talking. There would be we stop talking right now or you're going to die. Sure. Like that, yeah. like, like that. That's the problem is that they can't talk about it like they actually mean it, because if they did, <laughs> they would sound like Hitler and no one yeah. wants to talk to Hitler. But the problem is they are Hitler. <laughs> like, like it's it's really that simple. It, it's and it's like. It's the wild nature of these claims. Now, it, it was a lie. The 40 babies was a lie. That did not happen. Just like, you know, yeah. the the killing a pregnant woman, ripping the baby out. There was other uh, accusations that were thrown there that people saw, uh, people saw like uh, Arabic writings in the blood of people they mm -hmm. killed on door. door. It yeah. didn't happen. Like, all, it was all bullshit. And like the Israeli military is just lying and the Israeli, Israeli government to like, you know, press this on. And I remember hearing about the 40 beheaded babies things. I didn't believe that the second I heard it. Like, why would anyone do that? Like, like why? I, it's just, it's not something that, you know, anyone, like, it, it would be, it'd be a weird thing to go out of your way to do, you know? Yeah. yeah. First murder. of all, collecting 40 babies. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. them to and like, why, why are the you logistics? Doing this? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I'm not, I'm not saying Hamas is the most intelligent organization on this planet, but it seems to me that if I'm Hamas, the last thing I'm doing is beheading babies. From right. Babies. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, you're fighting this freedom fight. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't, well, it's, it doesn't. It's because they're pure evil and they're more yeah. evil than Voldemort. Remember? <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 It's, it's, I brought this up at a couple of shows ago, but, uh, uh, it was probably about the same topic about how this is bullshit. So back in 1990 or 1991, uh, there was this when George Bush Sr. was trying to get support to invade Iraq, uh, Iraq the first time. Uh, there's this 15 year old girl who testified before uh, Congress or the Senate or something like that. And she said that uh, she, she was in, she was Kuwaiti and that Iraqi soldiers had walked into a Kuwaiti hospital and like taken baby like a pre uh prematurely born babies out of incubators and just thrown them on the ground and killed them. Just like, like a room full of them. And of course everyone's like, what the fuck? And that helped, you know, gain support for this bullshit. It was all made up. It was all made up. Yeah. So like, whenever I hear a story like that, where someone is just so purely evil, that's like, okay, I, I'm not buying that for a second. And of course that's what it turned out to be. I just didn't think it would be this brazenly bad. Cause like the New, the York, New Times, York times. Yeah, yeah. Now after leading yeah. us into Iraq, after like championing, championing that, and then doing this, like the, you guys lose your license. You guys aren't allowed to do news anymore. I'm sorry. Like if, if that, and not even having a good reason to hire this chick, like they don't even have an explanation. Like they haven't given one. There's like, yeah, we just hired her. Like, we thought she'd be good because her nephew worked, even though she's not. Could you imagine us getting a job at a newspaper? I think we're more journalistically qualified than just some lady out of nowhere. Hire me. Hire me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I've been doing journalism longer and I wouldn't yeah. even call it journalism. Oh, <laughs> right.
No, the, but I think it's also insane that they literally hired an Israeli intelligence official, someone whose job, it, 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 someone whose job functionally is to justify and create Israeli propaganda to galvanize people against this war, to gather data to support the awful things that they do in the Gaza Strip and the West Bank, and thought that they were going to give a fair and unbiased report, thought look, that they were going to write a, a dope if, it's article. As, it's as if a hospital, to be your heart surgeon, just hired an executioner. <laughs> like, like that is like how poor of a hiring decision that is on its face, and the fact that they have no. Can you imagine being a journalist at that hospital? At, at that hospital, at the New York Times, like a, a hardcore. You worked your ass off. You got that New right. York Times job, and they hired this fucker. Yeah, and they, like give her a front page article. I would. I have seen fist fights in college yeah. newsrooms over less. Yeah. And you're yeah. telling me the New York Times got away with this even it's, internally? How is it's, that possible? It's almost, look, I hate to put on like my Alex Jones hat here, but it doesn't seem like an accident. Like, it doesn't. Like, I'm sorry. Like, no, no, there's yeah. no fucking way. It doesn't make any sense at all that uh, a 200 year old newspaper, you know, like the, the newspaper of record, the gray lady, like the standard of news in the United yeah. States didn't do their due diligence on who they hired for a front page article. And and not know what they were doing. They they did. They they they, they did. They're inter they're investigating themselves, and I don't think they're going to punish themselves too much for it. I I also it's just it's crazy. You said this article was published in November. No. Oh uh, yeah, the article about well, she was hired in November. Uh, when was the article so, uh, published? So so this article was at least published in November, correct? Yeah. Yeah. That's wild because I'm pretty sure it was very closely after the October 7th attack, the initial one. A week or two later, Joe Biden corroborated the yeah. 40 baby story. Well, so, and yeah. I think the day, the next day, the White House issued a retraction saying we cannot confirm mm -hmm, or deny the existence of 40 beheaded babies. Oh. We do not know if this happened. Oh, so crazy, she published yeah. that. After the fact, that's wild. That, that is anyone wild. who actually kind of pays attention and looks into it already knew that the 40 dead babies were a lie. And then Israel continued to go and say that, oh, well, we found Hitler on the lock screen of an iPad. Oh, well, we found Mein Kampf, <laughs> mein Kampf. in the bedroom. Mein Kampf. Like, that was written in English, one. by the way. Written in, written yeah, in no, English. That was great. Well, they, they showed the uh, – here we have this uh, board with the names of terrorists, and it was the just calendar. like a calendar yeah. or some shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was uh, – yikes, man. The uh, deadly Wednesday. I know the answer is that, like, they didn't see the calendar thing, but I feel like the calendar thing is enough for any rational person to go, anything this organization says I can't trust anymore. Because it, it, it's not even like that was, like, off the cuff something. They recorded, planned – edited and released this video for the sole express intent of informing us what was going on here and they straight up pointed to a calendar which said yeah. calendar shit and said <laughs> this is the names of terrorists believe me that's how dumb they think we are and you know what half of us are that dumb about. yeah tr apparently so yeah. i i really liked when they they like took uh like this pristine uh directions for making chemical weapons off the the body of some so it's like yeah that's what soldiers yeah. carry into combat it's just it's just just, just like a procedure yeah exactly <laughs> yeah it's like oh this is fucking insane I, I but apparently it worked apparently it worked and i do wonder though like how much it had to have worked but like, because a lot of people talk about conspiracies like they say 9 11 you know dick cheney uh planted you know the bombs in 9 11 or whatever bring on towers and i don't buy it because we wouldn't have needed to do that. Like that that's that's mm -hmm. too much. Like we wouldn't need something that wild to justify a war. And I think this kind of does demonstrate it. We can do it for a lot less, you know. And yeah. I, I wonder if it would e was even necessary because like we said, uh they kept saying stuff like, Oh, we would never bomb a hospital and then went on to bomb dozens of hospitals, we would never destroy a school and then go on to do it. I does the propaganda even matter at this point? Because people are gonna defend it either way. Yeah, I, I just don't know how much it matters, honestly. Yeah, Definitely you know, we were not we we were talking about the Iraq war <clears throat> earlier and like um, the post 9-11 haze that this country was in. And we often on the left or I guess just generally politically now, we we wonder like how did we ever think any of this was a good idea? And I think all of the propaganda that Israel is pushing out now shows us how people flaw, fall to this sort of national bloodthirst, right? Like you push out all of these lies about how babies are being beheaded, about how we literally found an Arabic translated version of Mein Kampf in a children's room, and this justifies us blowing up families. Like that's how we get to the point where we got to, 
for the war on terror mm -hmm. and it's how we get to where israel is committing uh genocide against the the gazan people right like they come up with all of these pretexts you're constantly shoved in your face from what should be reputable sources like the new york times uh lies about how awful palestinians are and then suddenly you know tens of thousands of people have died it, like we 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 wonder how this thing happens when it's it's happening right in front of our eyes and we shouldn't be surprised like this is what a government does when it's bloodthirsty when it wants something but needs to have a pretext for it you you make a great point there jeremy and that i i feel like when we talk about these ideologies like racism in this country you know th yeah. these in group out group is nationalism we think about it in the context of you know our everyday life here and you know not to say that racism isn't a problem not to say that like you know people don't get discriminated against and stuff but when we think about it we think about it like that like someone didn't get a job worst case scenario someone got beat up by 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 a mob maybe they died in the absolute worst case scenario but we don't really think about how those same ideological viewpoints those same philosophies that are just you know pretty common in this country is the exact same thing that can lead if you have enough manufactured consent to the yeah. mass slaughter of thousands of people to genocide and ethnic cleansing and really what this entire episode has made me unfortunately come to understand is we are way closer than we think we are always way closer to the atrocity than we think we are when we're walking around our everyday lives. And today it's Gaza, but fuck, it could be so much worse on any given Sunday, depending on how the wind blows, until we eradicate these ideologies from the source. All right, so if you're a regular viewer of the show and you regularly make it to the end of the episodes, you know what I'm about to say. This is the part where I tell you to subscribe and like if you haven't already and tell you that we appreciate you for making it this far because it's true. We really do. It helps out the algorithm a bunch. What also helps out the algorithm is having excellent guests like our wonderful guest today, who I won't even tell you who they are. Um, If, if you guys uh, don't know, they can tell you, Jeremy, who the hell are you? What, where can people find you? Uh, I'm Jeremy. This is Gage somewhere on the screen. Ooh, I don't know, somewhere right around here. here. <laughs> uh, we're from Head in the Office. You can just look us up on any platform, Head in the Office. We're on TikTok. That's our most prominent platform. YouTube, uh, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. You can find us just about everywhere. We post clips. We post full episodes on various platforms. Uh, Head in the Office, all platforms. It's a great time. I, I highly recommend the show. Hey, thanks a lot, guys. We appreciate it. We appreciate you guys watching as well. Uh, you've had this great opportunity to watch uh, four incredibly intelligent and articulate and handsome men. Uh, one is a little more, uh, you know, more handsome than the others, I won't say. But uh, check out the Head in the Office podcast. We, 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 really, we really recommend it. And if you're wondering what Head in the Office stands for, it doesn't stand for that, you freaking perv. Stop it. Just go ahead and watch the show. You'll enjoy it, I promise.